I wish you a wonderful day, dear friends of SAP Consulting and SAP Foundation Tutorials. Today, what we are going to do is we are going to install the newly launched ABAP platform trial, which gives you access to an SAP test system, exercise system, however you want to call it, on the ABAP platform. This system will enable you to try out basic technical activities within an SAP ABAP system, meaning, for example, it will enable you to try out ABAP development and ABAP programming. It will enable you to try out some basic basis activities, basis functionalities of the system and also some SAP security related activity. Um, what is not part of the system is we, there are no functional area or line of business modules on the system, meaning that you will not be able to use the uh, finance and controlling or sales and distribution or material management slash logistics functionality of S4HANA. So there is no business functionality in this system. Unfortunately, SAP does not provide easy access to a um, S4 HANA system that comes without an initial investment of money. But this system will give you an initial orientation of how to navigate an SAP system, how to work with it, and it will help you in understanding how an SAP system Operate. So if you're interested in that, this is the right video for you. This is probably the easiest way to install an SAP ABAP system for educational purposes. If you have ever tried installing an SAP NetWeaver ABAP system in the past, it was a huge mess. SAP has greatly improved this process and made it much more accessible for newcomers by making it available to deploy this system via Docker. And that is the first activity that we're going to do. We are going to download Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is available for both Windows and Mac OS, so choose whatever operating system you are running on your local desktop PC or laptop, for example, and download the required Docker Desktop binary. Another requirement for Windows users is you are going to need what is called the Windows subsystem for Linux. Because Docker Desktop will deploy the SAP system as a Docker container that is running on a Linux operating system. And the best way of running Linux systems on top of a Windows root system is using WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. It is easily installable via the Microsoft Store. So if you have not yet installed Windows Subsystem for Linux on your min Windows machine, please do it now by using the Microsoft Store. Now a quick demonstration of the installation of Docker Desktop. You can just leave the checkbox marked for creating a desktop shortcut and the installer should run through relatively easily. After the installer has finished, there will be a pop-up prompting you to restart or reboot your machine, which will enable Docker to, you know, install some Windows services or daemons if you're running on Mac OS and get everything up and running. So prepare for rebooting your machine, save any unsafe data on your machine uh, and close any applications that you might want to close properly before attempting the reboot. And then you will basically be ready to do that. And after um, the reboot, we are going to basically continue with the tutorial. Here comes the prompt for the reboot. It will pop up and now you can click on close and restart and do the actual reboot. After the reboot, you will see this pop up here about the license agreement. Don't be too much confused about the term subscription. Docker is free for small businesses 
educational pur purposes and personal use. So it is very likely that you fall under one of these categories. So basically, you can just accept the license agreement at this point and continue with the tutorial. When you try to launch Docker Desktop the first time on Windows, you may end up on this error message. Um, this is especially the case if you installed WSL a long time before installing Docker Desktop. I will quickly show you how to fix this. You just need a PowerShell that you run as administrator and then you just execute WSL minus minus update, which will update your Windows subsystem for Linux and which will then get rid of this error message. After the actual update, you can relaunch Docker Desktop and the corresponding uh, UI should come up, which is an indicator that the installation worked properly. As a next step, you need to register an account at Docker because the image provided by SAP that we're going to download from the Docker marketplace, so to speak, it can only be downloaded as a registered user. So you go to this page here from Docker, click on sign up, create a username, you need an email address, etc. the standard procedure basically. And after you have created your user on the Docker Hub website, then you need to actually go to Docker Desktop and log in, which is on the top right of Docker Desktop, the button called sign in. After this, we are ready to actually download the image. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly go over the pre requirements before for running the system. So they say uh, for Windows, you need 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, they recommend installing it on a machine with 32 gigabytes of RAM. You're going to need a quad core CPU on the machine where you're going to run the Docker container. And they say the minimum requirement is 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, that is 16 gigabytes of RAM for running the Docker container. So you actually should have more than 16 gigabytes of RAM because your root operating system like macOS or Windows will require its own RAM. So yeah, more than 16 gigabytes of RAM and you are going to need about 170 gigs of free disk space on your hard drive for running this image. Now we are ready to actually pull the image which is done via this command. And you can just execute this on a normal command line for Windows users. It's going to be the PowerShell and it is going to start downloading the image. It will take a while because the image is tens of gigabytes in size. So grab a coffee real quick and I'm going to pull you in again once this is complete. Here you see how it looks like once the pull or download of the image is actually complete. After you have downloaded the image, it is time to run it. There are two comments provided by the SAP page. The top one is for normal Linux operating systems. The bottom one labeled other is for Mac OS and Windows. And in addition to the command listed here, you are going to add another directive, which is called agree to SAP license, which I'm going to do myself real quick by opening a notepad. And at the, at the end of the provider command, I'm going to add minus agree to SAP license. Actually, it's only one minus at the front. And with that command, we are able to deploy the image on a Docker container, run the Docker container, and then the SAP system inside of that will automatically start. This Windows Firewall prompt, if you're at home in your own network, you can just confirm this message. Um, it's basically enough to do that. Um, if you want to expose your Docker container in public Wi-Fi, you will also need to select the lower version, uh, the lower checkbox. This should be relatively seldomly needed. And now the HANA database is starting inside of the Docker container, which will take a while. So you have to wait a while until the system is up. I'm going to show you in a second how it looks once the SAP system is ready. 
um, then the prompt will slightly change. Here you can see how it looks once the SAP system is up, you know, at the bottom it says all services have been started, have fun. Which means the SAP system is now operating, the services are listening and you can potentially log on to the SAP system. However, in order to do that, the classic way, you're gonna need SAP Logon or how it is classically called SAP GUI. You can download it on this web page. There is a Windows version and a Java version for Windows. Obviously, we're gonna use the window, Windows version. You ju you're just gonna download it from this SAP page and it will require you to create a user with SAP in order to be able to um, use the download. Mm. However, don't be confused in the SAP login form where it says business email. You don't necessarily need to register with your business email. You can just use a private email. I'm going to show you in a second. So here where it says business email address, just use your normal private email address um, and it will be fine. Register with SAP and then afterwards you can uh, download SAP GUI from this web page. Once that is done, SAP GUI will come in a RAR file, which you can open with WinRAR or 7-zip, however, whatever tool you want to use. And inside the RAW file, there is a folder and inside the, of the folder, there is the EXE for the installation for at least under Windows. If you have installed a prior version of SAP Logon, I recommend uninstalling that first. So uninstall an old version of SAP Logon first. Then after uninstalling the old version, if you had one, you just double click the installer and the installer will then kick off the installation of SAP Logon 8.0. Don't worry about the beginning of the installer. Um, it will stay at 0% for quite a while. It will take a while for an initial script to kick off. You just choose the uh, top checkbox and click on next and then you uh, install SAP Logon. After the installer finishes, you can just click on finish. You don't necessarily need to restart your computer because if you do, you would also need to restart the Docker container if you do that because right now the SAP system is already running. So before we can log on with SAP Logon, we need to do one last thing, which is adjusting the so-called hosts file because the SAP system is pre-configured to run with a certain host name. So under Windows, you just open an editor of your choice. You can use the standard editor. You need to run it as administrator though. And once you do that, you need to open the hosts file. Um, so under macOS, the hosts file is located on a different path. It is located in under ETC hosts. Under Windows, it is located here, system32 drivers ETC. And then you click on all files on the bottom right and you choose the hosts file. In this hosts file, you need to add a new line reflecting the pre-configured host name of the Docker image, which is this one here. And you just create a new line on the hosts file. And you, the only thing you need to pay attention to, it cannot be commented, meaning make sure there is no pound sign at the beginning of the line so that it is not commented. And then you type 127.001, then two times the host name and on the last entry you add .dummy.no domain. So 127.001 VHCALH a for HCI and then again with dot dummy dot no domain and save. Now you have adjusted the hosts file successfully and now you're ready to log into the system, which is currently should currently be running, which you can see here. Once the system is running, you open SAP Logon on your machine, which is now called SAP Logon 64. Good old Nintendo 64 times. Open it. And um, once it is open, we will create a new connection by clicking on the paper icon at the top left. And basically you click next in the first screen. As a description, you can choose whatever you like. 
Um, the system ID is A4H and I will call the description A4H ABAP test system 1909. The instance number is 00, and the application server, which is the uh, bottom field, where you can type the host name for which the SAP system is configured. Click on next, click next on the next screen and finish. Now you can double click and it will open the logon screen of the SAP system. And here you can log in with the pre-configured users. There are three different pre-configured users. Um, for beginners, the most important one will be called developer. The user developer is a pre-configured user by SAP. It is pre-configured to conduct ABAP development um, activities. So with this user, you will be able to program your first ABAP programs, etc. And the best client to log on is 001. And so this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to log in as developer. And the password is also visible in the um, uh, Docker page, uh, uh, capital H, TODS, small case, and then 70334. Log in, confirm the copyright message of SAP, and now you're logged into the system. Congratulations, you can now use this ABAP system to try out some basic stuff. The users SAP Star and Dedic are for more administrative functionalities, like if you want to try out some SAP basis stuff, you can log on with SAP Star or Dedic. At some point in the system, the license is going to run out. In my case, this will be on October 19th. And on this date, you need to renew the license, which will still be free, um, most likely, but you need to do this. So just keep it in mind that a few months from now, you need to renew the license, and this will be a separate video on this YouTube channel. Now, as a last step, I will show you how you can start and stop the Docker container, and therefore how to start and stop the SAP system. So the easiest way to do this after you have initially run the docker run command on your command line is the docker container will show up in docker desktop. So in docker desktop, if you go to containers, you will see your docker container here and you can basically start it by just pressing this button. It will then be uh, shown as running and here you can open it to see when the actual SAP system is being available because you remember that takes a while. So right now the HANA database is still starting. So you need to wait until this prompt shows again the message, you know, all services are up, have fun. And once that is the case, you can log in with SAP logon. To stop the container, you simply press this button again, this stop button here. There is another way to do it on the command line. The commands to do it on the command line level are in the description of the YouTube video. You just open a new um, command uh, prompt, for example, a new PowerShell on Windows and you enter the command, right? So yeah, sure, that's basically it. I wish you much fun with your entry into the SAP world. Um, there will be more videos about SAP on this YouTube channel. It will be a mix between German and English videos. So, you know, basically um, um, choose whatever language you prefer or you can also use subtitles. And if you like to see more SAP content, if you want to get into the SAP consulting space, maybe please consider subscribing to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, consider giving it a thumbs up. And I hopefully see you next time for the next video. Until then, have a good day and see you next time.